Okay, so I just bailed on a game of Twilight Imperium on a solo. And I'm going to give some of my words about it, and I'll probably come back with some others. But I didn't want to get completely stopped on the rant I was having, because I've discovered a lot of what I don't like about the Euro style games by playing this. So here's the thing Twilight Imperium is, you know, this wonderful theme that I love and it gives this impression that it's going to be this huge empire building game but when it comes down to it it's a game about winning this little racetrack for points okay i've seen other games that are get to you know and and it's not like oh it's over at a certain point there's some cute stuff with the cards having some uh there are other ways of winning there's these other two cards that may or may not be in the deck for domination. Uh, but otherwise, if you're not going to make one of them, and I think that they're very hard to make, to tell you the truth. Uh, I mean, 18 planets outside your home system is humongous. And although I came close to it with green. Uh, and the other one, uh, what, the, uh, I control all the planets in the home systems of two other players. I could see that happening as well, not in the game we were playing, because uh, people kind of buttoned down and prevented themselves from losing. But if somebody's sloppy, they could lose their home system, and they could still be playing. But, and it would be a shame and everything, but it's, it's possible again. But still, you don't know whether or not those are in there. So, pretty much you're playing for manipulating the victory point track. Uh, and there's no question that this number eight card here is pretty important towards that. We, we definitely saw yellow end up in a situation where they were actually not, although they've been the most successful at most of the cards, because they got denied one of these, uh, one of their turns with this, they were going to be in third place instead of uh, first or second. Um, the players who did end up in first and second, one of them clearly had a lot of power and dominance in the galaxy. And if they won, hey, that's great. The other one didn't strike me as terribly important. Uh, the red player in my game never really did much. They just managed to get the points at the times that they needed. just did not have anything to really differentiate them from a lot of other, from, from the other players who didn't do all that well. Yeah, they ended up in better position overall than black or blue, and certainly better than purple did through most of the game, but only by a little bit, and certainly not a better position than yellow. Yellow far and away had what looked like the leading position until green jumped in with uh, this stance of, ah, oh, I've almost got enough planets to win on, on the auto victory card. Okay, so what went, what is it that I distilled from this game that I say, ah, that's what I don't like about most Euros as well. Okay, one is the fast pace of, of, of play. Why do I not like that? Well, obviously in solo play, it's horrible because I can't be one player for long enough uh, to pass to the next player, you know, to really enjoy one player's strategic position. So what do I have to do? I have to keep switching gears and trying to figure out what that one player wants to do throughout the entire, uh, you know, again and again throughout the game with each player, just for every action. I hate doing that. Um, I don't even like doing that in a two-player game, like, and, and this is one of the problems with the CDGs as well, because it's like, oh, I take an action, now he takes an action, now the next person takes an action. That is bad for me for solo. There's no question there. But let's take a look at it from outside solo. Okay, there's too much going on. Now, I sat down and played, and this has very little to do with this directly, but I think I'd feel the same with this game. I sat down and played game of... Uh, here I Stand, which I really, really love solo, uh, multiplayer. And I felt like 
like I was spending the entire game, and I ended up winning because I was focused, trying to figure out what my next move was going to be. And then when it became my turn just doing it, and, you know, not getting any chance to interact with other players, not having that nice downtime that I'm used to when I'm playing a sociable game, board game. Um, okay, so it doesn't work for me to have this kind of game usually in solo or in multiple players. I'll tell you the truth, if I'm going to play something where I have to make lots and lots of little decisions, I want them to be really, really easy. I want the game to be something along the lines of a Monopoly or maybe a Yahtzee or, or cards. Uh, where I, where it's no big deal that I'm, uh, you know, not thinking every moment about it. And this is one of the things I really dislike about a lot of these games is that, what's your decision? What's your decision? Something like 1830 has something similar to that in the stock round, and maybe if people played it really, really tight, I wouldn't like it either, because you'd be constantly being brought up to do something, to do something, and uh, I'm used to a lot of lag time while people are thinking about what they're doing, in, e even in that. Not so much in the stock round, but in the operating rounds where people are counting and, 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 and stuff like that. Um, so a lot of these games are really based on this, ah, keep me in the game. Well, here's somebody who doesn't like that. <laughs> I want that lag time. Part of why I'd be playing what, to play solitaire, it allows me to shift gears nicely. Now, if I'm really, really familiar with a game, like I am with 1830, or, and I feel like I can translate that to other 18xx's, now some people certainly will say, eh, no, you can't, and that's obvious from your play of them. But uh, if I feel like I can be that comfortable with it, or with a game like Bridge or Hearts or whatever, no problem. But if I'm struggling to keep in contact with the game and try to figure out what the hell I'm doing during all the time when other people are playing, yeah, I'm not happy, you know? And if I have to do that solitaire for every single seat I'm sitting in, again, I'm not happy. That's not going to work well with my style of play. Okay, so that's me. That's my objection and why it's not good, why it's not a good game for me. But hopefully people will stop suggesting these games that they love that are going to be this kind of fast-paced shifting because uh, it's not going to work for me, right? I want to be able to be one side for a while. Um, if there are few enough sides, I can handle that. Okay, so what else do I not like? Well, obviously, look, when I got a hex full of plastic junk on it like this, I can't see what's in the hex anymore. <laughs> um, I can understand the need maybe to not use counters to use plastic. Maybe plastic's cheaper or something. But I'll tell you, it should be a lot smaller. It should be, you know, I mean, I got games like uh, 4000 AD or Land 4000 that has you know, all these tiny little pieces and they work fine. You know, Risk used to have lots of pieces that were small enough to fit in the spaces. They work fine. You start making these, I mean, is it, it's not even like they're terribly distinguishable. I have trouble telling one piece from another. They're all the same color, and they're all these weird shapes, and some of them are fairly similar. I mean, I can tell this from anything else, but I have trouble telling these two guys apart, especially when I'm feeling around. They both have the same basic shape, and they're very different pieces. Uh, I don't have that problem with counters that I can stack, you know, and sort. Uh, but these take up too much space to sort properly, and it's just a real problem for me. Uh, do I think it's a problem for other people? I don't know. You know, I think that this game would play better on a computer, and it's one of very few games that I would say that about. I would never say that about most of my war games, but just because it would get rid of that damn, uh, the components, which I find really, really irritating. Um, it also takes up a big footprint, which is okay, uh, you know, but it would, it, 
To fit these pieces, it would have to take up a humongous footprint because I would say that the hexes would have to be, you know, about twice the diameter that they are to hold these guys. Now, much smaller pieces would work better and much more easily distinguishable. Even if they were abstract shapes, it would work better uh, because most of these, it's just hard to see what you got. You got a pile of stuff in a space and you don't even have the option to use counters for most of the stuff. All right, let me think what I'll say. Uh, okay, the theme aspect. So, this is one of the things that also really bugs me, is that here you have this big Space Empire thematic game, and uh, it just doesn't feel as grounded as things like Stellar Conquest did, or some of these older games did. Why? Well, the, uh, the cards don't seem as driven uh, as, say, balancing your own economy in a Stellar Conquest would. Picking these, why is it that I can pick, you know, a certain action and that influences everyone else's action choices? That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Again, it's a gamey mechanic, something that's been taken from the Euro game side uh, of this, you know, there are nice mechanisms like picking actions or bidding on an auction or this, that, and the other. Ones that don't always link very well to the game itself. And that's where this, I think, really fails the worst, is that action picking is too important to the game and you can deprive people of things uh, through a mechanism that doesn't seem to make sense to the theme. You know, how do I justify some of these? What, what does it mean that I picked the trade counter? Why am I in charge of the merchant guilds this term? What have I done to earn that other than sitting in the right place at the right time? and other people not wanting it at that point. And what is it about, you know, the game? There's no link between who I am and what I'm doing and what my power is. Now compare this to something like Dune, which has some Euroish aspects, but boy, the powers there are absolutely linked to the race. You know, the race that you pick has certain abilities. Those abilities affect the flow of the game, perhaps. Um, as the special abilities here do. I have no objection to those, except that they're kind of hard to remember, but that's me. Um, then likewise, these cards. I don't mind them in terms of the, ah, uh, this is what that group wants, or whatever, except that they just don't seem fixed to something that necessarily makes sense. They just don't feel right when they come out. You know, it's like, ah, here's your objective for the turn, you know, <laughs> or here, here's something you could work towards. Um, it just doesn't feel linked to the actions on the board. It doesn't feel like what I'm doing drives these. And to some extent, I feel like it should. You know, it, it, to me, it feels like, there should be actions and reactions between what you do and what it causes to become valuable. Now, that's a lot of work, right? You know, that's not a matter of just designing some gamey system that's potentially fair because, you know, it, it could fall out by luck to anyone. It's something that requires not only putting some thought into linking what the effect, what the cause and effect is, but also then trying to balance those. What I do kind of like is the secret objective cards, and I like that most of them seem uh, to directly, at least the ones that I saw, to directly involve the one planet, Mercatol. I think that's cool. I really do. Uh, and I like the fact that there are ones that don't as well that there are some players who have but that secret objective is just one little piece it's only two of your victory points and what do you need maybe 10 for the base game 
So while that's the edge that might cut you uh, a bonus, it's also, you know, not sufficient to really define the game. Now, I don't mind that particularly if the things that defined the game were more closely tied into the actions on the board instead of just something you gotta go do, you know? <laughs> and a lot of them were, were fairly simple, some of them not so much. Uh, so, for example, the guy who raced to take Marketal, it was going to be pretty hard to take it away from him. Now, that may be in part because of the design of the board kept everybody kind of away from it. But, uh, yeah, I, you know, I just, uh, there's just too many negatives. Now, can I say I would enjoy this with other people? I don't know, you know, because I think that the negatives that I brought out in terms of that pulsing in play and having to always be ready to jump onto the game, Aren't gonna, aren't gonna throw me. And then there's things like, you know, all the dice rolling and everything, but that's okay. I can live with that in this kind of game. What I have a, a, a real problem with is just how much I have to, as a player, whether I'm playing solo or not, focus on what my, you know, position is and what I'm gonna do next. I shouldn't have to be thinking that hard throughout the entire game. It defeats my solo playability. And it also would badly damage my, my enjoyment of the game as I'm playing it against other people. All the same, obviously that's a type of game that's very popular. And it's becoming more and more popular where it's infiltrating games like this so that you don't see an Axis and Allies in space anymore. You're seeing, you know, Settlers of Catan in space or something. No, I mean, you know, obviously it's not. Uh, it, it's obviously not a pure Euro game, but it shows enough of those elements to really turn me off in the same way. Uh, making a Euro game bigger, you know, more epic, <laughs> doesn't do it for me. Uh, I had enough problem with the big box plastic games like an Axis and Allies in terms of being too... Uh, you know, too light a treatment. And I have to say, this is not that much lighter in terms of the overall of the game than, you know, whatever the war games have put up in the science fiction realm that I've played, which is things like Cosmic and uh, Co uh, not Cosmic and Cop, but I'll, I'll count that in with this. That's actually what this reminds me of in a lot of ways. I, you know, in Cosmic Encounter, you're holding this hand of cards and trying to make this decision all the time. What's my next move? Can I win? Can I stop him? Can I do this? You know, all this effort and not really a clear board presence. So this is actually similar to that in a lot of ways. And I think if I played it a few times with other people, I would probably feel as comfortable with it as I did with Cosmic Encounter. Um, but and it would still be just as bad solo. But uh, I was thinking more on the Stellar Conquest side or oh, uh, whatever the hell uh, the Tim Jim one I, I played recently. You know, it's, it's not, those aren't that much deeper, although I think they are better linked to their theme because they don't have these kind of gamey mechanisms in place. It does remind me a little bit more of something like Amiibo Wars, although I think there's more depth to this by far, uh, in terms of you've got these kind of weird mechanisms to make things work. Amiibo Wars is a little more fun for me, and a little easier to plot because it's a little easier to play, probably. Um, you know, I don't have to make all this in-depth thought about what my next action is. This is too much like some of those heavier Euros, and it's just too long uh, for me to have coped with something like that very easily. And again, you know, I mean, I, I, I can respect the game without liking it, and I can definitely see where the uh, 
where the the convergence of that Euro gamer and you know the the Euro concepts of games that are that are popular right now and um, you know this let's have lots of plastic pieces and roll dice <laughs> mentality is and I can see where you want to mix the two just like war games wanted some of that with the CDGs and caught on to that um, I can definitely see it it's just it's not not at all something that I think I, I'm going to take a lot of enjoyment in. All right, uh, I was going to do more with like you know show you the components or whatever, but I've already shown that enough. I think I I don't see any reason to to do more after I clean this up. Um, I hope this is helpful to someone. I wouldn't suggest watching too much of me cursing trying to play this. It was. Uh, I can't imagine that being a terribly enjoyable experience for anybody less sadistic than I am. <laughs> All right.